Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discussing about dynamic stability and we have seen the characteristic equation equation for longitudinal dynamics which was evolved assuming small perturbation and we got equation of the form a s 4 plus b s cube plus c s square plus d s plus e equal to 0 and how did we get this? We know that we have to put determinant a equal to 0 and a x equal to b was the matrix equation and this a b c d e they are expanded using the dimensional derivatives inertia properties and once you see the exact expression you will realize uh, each one of these has some importance especially we will be focusing on E right. Before we go to the next part of our lecture uh, let us uh, understand what are you doing. If I take you back to second order system mass spring damper system remember we had equation of the form S square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square equal to 0 right and we wanted to find the damping ratio and natural frequency. If I go one step backward if you remember the equation was of the form x double dot plus c by m x dot plus k by m x equal to 0 was the characteristic equation in time domain right and then we took Laplace transform. So, then it becomes S square x of s plus c by m s x of s plus k by m x of s equal to 0. So, this is in frequency domain we have applied Laplace transform to this equation. What are the changes we have seen from differential equation it has become algebraic equation ok and then we said I take x of s common. So, s square plus c by m s plus k by m equal to 0. So, what was the characteristic equation here? It was s square plus c by m s plus k by m equal to 0. This is second order equation, this is quartic that is fourth order right S 4 is here and here we have realized that there will be two roots we have seen that and depending upon the value of C by m, k by m remember because if you see the roots for from this equation they will be lambda 1, lambda 2 will be minus C by m plus minus under root c by m whole square minus 4 into k by m by 2 that is all. And we knew that we have already done it that depending upon the sign under the square root we will have the real root or imaginary roots right. And we have seen there are possibilities real root roots only that could be complex conjugate pair and also we realize that fundamentally what do you want this root if I plot in real and imaginary axis then I want the roots should be somewhere here 
or somewhere here. Because I want the real part of the root to be negative, then there will be a tendency for dynamic stability. Right? If the root comes this side, then I know that the real part has become positive, so it will diverge. So, that was the understanding we learned from this. Similar thing is also here. Here also, we have to solve this equation and find the values of s. And the s could be complex pair, right? it could be only real. There are so many combinations possible, right? And to ensure that the aircraft is dynamically stable in longitudinal plane or in longitudinal dynamics, I have to ensure that the real part of the roots, whatever is coming by solving this, they should be in the negative axis, that is negative x axis, yeah, negative real axis, this side, right. But you can understand, as far understanding is concerned, this is fine, but to handle it mathematically, we need some technique, right, okay. And that will be will be doing. Uh, initially, I will tell you in the next lecture uh, how to handle this and the, the basis for it to train you for different types of equations. One tutorial will be there and a lot of examples will be given, so that you can understand how to handle such conditions. Right? You will find that for longitudinal case, For low speed longitudinal case and the aircraft typically like business transport airplane, you will find that typically when I evaluate the roots of this equation by numerical methods, I will find that it will have two pair of complex conjugates. Right. So, if I write it, it will be something like this. One will be typically like this, the four roots will be distributed. And also, another interesting thing for longitudinal case, you will soon see that this A mostly will be negative right and if it is large negative it will correspond to a particular type of oscillations and if i write not only a and a and c both will be generally less than zero and it will be corresponding to particular type of oscillations. If A is large negative compared to C, will soon you see that this will correspond to short period mode. And the other, the C root having C, that will go to fugoid mode. I am sure you are starting thinking what is the short period mode, what is the fugoid mode. Before we go for an elaborate analysis, let us come back to this equation. Let us come back to the aircraft simultaneously. The aircraft is cruising like this, and if I give a small elevated disturbance, I lift it up and immediately I take it out like impulse, you will find the aircraft will just get disturbance like this and come back to the equilibrium if it is dynamically stable. And that is what we call a short period excitation. The second thing, if I hold the elevator up for some time and then release, you will find the aircraft goes like this, does like this, and then come back to equilibrium. And that is what is a fugoid mode. Now, for short period mode, you can understand that A, if it is large negative, that root will correspond to short period mode, and the other one will correspond to fugoid mode. Okay. So, this is uh, in general, uh, true for most of the uh, transport type airplane. And once you understand how to handle this, you can handle the long lateral directional case, which you will be doing this time. Right? But do not forget, 
whatever we have learned here, exactly same thing we are going to translate here. What we will do? We have found that this a s 4 plus b s q plus c s square plus d s plus e equal to 0 can be equivalently written as 2 second order product of 2 second order system. Right. And that makes our life very handy for a designer. So, we can put this equation to be 0, this equation to be equal to 0 and find out the corresponding damping ratio and natural frequencies. Right? So, we will we'll illustrate this thing through examples and through final treatment. Before I go further, I would like to take you back to this equation short period equation u dot equation which was minus g theta cos theta 1 plus x u into u plus x t u into u plus x alpha into alpha plus x delta e into delta e. Similarly, w dot was minus or minus w dot minus u 1 q is equal to minus g sin theta 1 plus z u into u plus z alpha into alpha plus z alpha dot into alpha dot plus z q into q plus z delta e into delta e and q dot is equal to m u into u plus m alpha to alpha plus m alpha dot into alpha dot plus m q into q plus m t u into u q dot equal to m u into u m alpha into alpha m alpha dot into alpha dot m q into q plus m t u into u plus m t alpha into alpha plus m delta e into delta e. Remember through all the analysis we said thrust and drag they can be handled in a similar fashion. So, we said we are not considering this m t u and m t alpha. Right. Now, we will see that we can easily incorporate x t u m t alpha and m t u you have to only include that x t u is equal to q 1 s c t x u plus 2 c t x 1 divided by m u 1 and what was x u aerodynamic? You see it was q 1 s c d u plus 2 c d 1 by m u 1 minus sign here. You could see that for x t u and x u this was because of drag primarily and drag and thrust is the opposite direction. So, this minus sign is not here, but exactly the same treatment. Could you see this? Right? Similarly, if you check for uh, m t alpha, m t alpha will be q 1 s c bar c m t alpha by i y y and you could see corresponding aerodynamic m alpha term was q 1 s c c m alpha by i y y. All this coefficient c m t alpha or c t x u c t x 1 can easily be estimated through analytical method not so accurate, but generally these things are obtained through experiment through wind tunnel testing. Right. But the point is you could see here if I know m alpha if I have understood how to handle this I have to just get the m t alpha in the same fashion. Right. And why m t alpha is there you could understand also the physics behind it. Suppose this is the airplane and let us say this is the engine or a propeller at an alpha there will be some normal force n p acting like this you know the momentum of air will be pushed like this. So, this into C g of the airplane will give a moment because of thrust component. So, that is how 
the origin of m t alpha lies. Okay. So, I thought I will complete this so that you do not get mixed up when actually you work in the real field, but for further analysis we will not be considering this as we have agreed that we know this is straightforward if you just go and adding some term. So, I will now remove these things. Okay. I will start with this characteristic equation of the form a s to the power 4 plus b s to the power q c s square d s plus e equal to 0. Right? And typically a I will write few of these a is u 1 minus z alpha dot and b is minus u 1 minus z alpha dot into x u plus m q minus z alpha minus m alpha dot into u 1 plus z q. This will be displayed separately and most importantly E I will write as g cos theta 1 into m alpha into z u minus z alpha into m u. This is for theta 1 equal to 0, because the additional sign theta term will come which I have taken it out, because theta 1 is 0 sin theta is 0. Okay, and also I, I can easily simplify this as g into m alpha z u minus z alpha m u. Why I am writing at this stage separately? We will see there are a lot of information we can extract from this expression of E. I repeat again this expression of E is not complete, there will be a sin theta term and those who are feeling little disturbed let me write for them this is g sin theta 1 into m u x alpha plus or minus x u into m alpha like this. But since I have put theta 1 equal to 0, so I am eliminating this and I am also putting this value 1, so E is this. Okay. Do not worry about this expression, you know I have to put determinant A equal to 0 and find the determinant, you will get all this expression when you compare with this sort of an equation. Right. To comment on the dynamic stability characteristics of a system having this type of characteristic equation, a quick estimate you can get applying Rout criteria. And there will be one lecture where actual Routh criteria will be explained and some numerical will be solved so that you can uh, be handy with it. But I am just writing this conditions are A, B, C, D, E, all the coefficients of this equation has to be greater than 0 and also D into B C minus A D minus B square E should be greater than 0. If these two conditions are satisfied, then I can say that all the roots of this equation will lie in the left hand, left hand side. That is, all the roots will be here with the negative, this is imaginary, this is real. So, real part will be all here, so that it will ensure dynamic stability. Because you recall from second order system also, is something like lambda t, it goes with that and lambda is negative, then there is a decay of the amplitude. Okay. So, this condition to be met to ensure that the aircraft is dynamically stable in longitudinal mode. What does that mean? It means since I know A, B, C, D are function of the derivative, dimensional derivatives and inertia properties, I should select those dimensional derivatives based on the configuration. I will have to change the configuration, so that finally the configuration ensures 
right value of combination of values of A, B, C, D, and E, so that these two conditions are met, and hence the aircraft will have longitudinal dynamic stability. Thank you.